Mr. Miller. Good evening once again, City Council, Lawrence Miller, 2314 Radcliffe Avenue. You know, I just want to make one statement real quick as the City of Flint. You have to be like that rubber ball, the harder we fall, the higher we must rise. And we know that GM has pulled out and instead of us coming together, we put it apart. Well, anyhow, I'm here to ask City Council, um, I have a youth group called Men of Tomorrow, and I know about this master plan. And I, was, I would like to know, uh, we, we're trying to put a, pro, a program, a project together over on the Big Old Street area, which is in a hurley revitalization area. And what, I, what we'd like to do, we'd like to find out if we need to uh, get permits to um, have gazebos built out there in a certain area with uh, picnic areas, where it'd be a public, open to the public, where the senior citizens in that community could come out and enjoy themselves and they wouldn't have to be prisoners in their own home because uh, my, youth, my youth group, we uh, do the cleanup in that neighborhood, keep the, the grass cut and everything, and, and we was wondering how can we go about, and if we need permits to build picnic tables, the gazebos, and things like that. Can anyone on city council answer that question? Like I said, we like to, even though I don't live on the north end, I said a lot is not being done, and so we selected that area to try to help do something in that neighborhood. And as a lot of people know, we do things right now for senior citizens, and we would like to do that. Um, what I could do is talk with you after the meeting, because if the property is owned by the land bank, um, it's um, partnerships that you can do with the land bank to be able to repurpose the property. So what I can do, I can talk to you, and I have your information already. You do great work. So what I can do is talk to you afterwards, give you some contact information, and then you can contact and find out who actually owns that property that you're talking about doing that on. And if it's something that you can partnership with the land bank, um, you can adopt a lot. And if you adopt a lot, you, you possibly can do something um, of that sort. So right after the meeting, we can talk, and I can give you that information. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President and the City Council. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that concludes our speakers for this evening. We have no um, resolutions to act on. We do have an ordinance uh, for second reading that we held the public hearing on. It was postponed. It was sent back to the attorney's office. It was the medical marijuana dispensary ordinance. And um, there were, when I looked at the ordinance, there were two amendments that were done um, to the ordinance, the original ordinance, which makes the ordinance less restrictive and would not require a, another uh, publication in uh, first reading and second reading. And, and I'll just remind everybody what the uh, two uh, amendments were that I, that I seen. One was in the ordinance you couldn't have um, a marijuana dispensary in a, like a strip mall. And strip malls were designed for um, commercial businesses, and so that was taken out. And the other change was those um, businesses that opened up prior to our moratorium that opened up under the state law that allowed them to open, uh, those then would be grandfathered in, and then everything else, they would all have to comply with the ordinances or with the regulations within that ordinance. So if I miss something in that ordinance, in those changes, someone can correct me. But those were the two changes that I see. Am I, am I correct, Madam Clerk? That's correct. Anyone else? Did I miss anything? OK, so what is your pleasure um, to do with the ordinance number? Mr. Chair, I move 130344.4 for first reading. Support. For what? First reading? First yeah. reading. Support. You want to send it back for first reading? I'm ready to go with it. Let's move it for first reading. It's already here? First reading. Second. Second reading. I'm just going by what's on the agenda. The agenda well, says the, the point reason, four is The reason, and, and if, I, if I might for a second, and, and, and I would ask that the president please allow me to differ with him a little bit on this one. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
Because I think that there was substantial, the two amendments that were made to that particular ordinance, I think were substantial amendments and therefore feel that the public should still be allowed to comment upon them. And therefore, we put it under, for, under first reading so that we can then publish it for second reading and adoption the next time. Now, a lot of people may not know how many uh, stores were grandfathered in, for example. And if I recall correctly, there may have been between uh, 8 and 11. Have, have and we had a first reading on this yet? N not on the part, the, not on the, the amendments. Not on the amendments. And that's why I feel that we need to publish it so that the public can see what the well, amendments are. It's published are. after it's adopted, isn't it? No. They have not seen it. They've not seen it. They've not seen the new amendments. They seen the ordinance that had um, it illegal to operate in a strip mall, and the grandfather clause was not a portion right. of the original ordinance. Mm -hmm. And my conversation with the attorney office was trying to not have to go to republication was is that the ordinance is less restrictive and it's not a substantive change, right. and. Um, the attorney's office also didn't feel that it needed to go back for first reading. But if council members want to send it back for first reading, I don't have a doubt. No, I, I don't. Reading. I don't. Yeah, I don't have, I mean, a, I have problem a problem with it being for second reading either. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, I don't care. One way when it's other, less restrictive than it was initially, I don't know what. I'm I move to. I move to. That's fine. I move to uh, send this for first reading so it can go to publication so that the public will have a proper opportunity to digest. Uh, this ordinance along with the amendment and the amended changes. Okay. It's been moved and support. Is there support? I'll support it. It's been moved and supported to send 130344.4 for first reading. But can I make a suggestion that before we get to the floor with these things and we have this type of a, an issue, can we get these resolved before we get to the floor? Mm -hmm. I don't know why we're dealing with this now. This is something that should have been taken care of prior to tonight as to whether or not we were going to do it for first reading or a second well, reading we, or we did it, we did well do we that. didn't well, we didn't because we're having the discussion now so we need to take care of these problems before we get to the floor is my suggestion lovingly it's been moved and supported for first reading roll madam clerk miss Pablo. yes mr nolden yes mr freeman yes for first reading mr neely yes Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroon? Yes. And if for the next meeting, what we will do is have a complete listing of where those particular dispensaries are located for the benefit of the public, because, because I think the public should know. Okay, then ordinance uh, 130343.2 can be dropped. No, no. Why not? P point, we should postpone it because these are companion ordinances we have one to replace it though no 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 it's it's a why would we why would we postpone it what is what is the hold up on getting this you can't, on the you can't adopt we have to adopt the zoning ordinance first and then we adopt the business ordinance second oh that's the business so they ordinance. are companion okay. ordinances they are that's you correct. can't move one without the other no you're absolutely so it right. has to be postponed yep. you're absolutely right Ms. Brown. Okay, a motion to be order, in order to postpone 130343.2. So move. And to, to attach that to the ordinance when 130344.4 uh, comes back for second reading. Is that correct? That's correct. Because we've already had first reading on 130343.2. Okay, so it's been moved and supported to postpone. Discussion? Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolan? Yes, the postponement. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroom? Yes. Ms. Pompla? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Ch Ms. Chair, I got a question. Yeah. Does a public hearing come before or after the first hearing? Uh, the public hearing comes after the first reading. So tonight would have been the first reading, and then the next one will be a public hearing. So we had a we should have had a public hearing tonight on the one that we postponed because it was a second reading. No, we've no, already had. We've it. already had the public hearing on that. And we had the no public hearing on 
both of these ordinances. Okay, um, no, never, never mind. Because they're, they're companion ordinances. I understand. Okay. So the next time we have a public hearing, it'll be just on the one, point four. Okay. Okay, that concludes um, the council agenda. Are there any council persons wishing to speak? Yeah, I, I would. Councilman Nolan? Um, you know, I, when I read the, um, the directive from Mike Brown, I was a little disappointed um, because I know that, what, almost 11 months or so ago, we had another council member to resign, and we went by the will of that council person, and we made a recommendation, and we appointed that person that they recommended. Um, I just feel like the eighth ward is it's a disservice to the eighth ward because um, they will not have a representative to vote on this master plan that um, we're going to be adopting in the month of October. Um, so with that, um, and I don't know if I'm going to get enough support or not, but I would like to make a, um, a motion to have the city clerk prepare a resolution asking Mike Brown to, recon um, to, to um, rescind his first directive and allow us to appoint um, a person for the 8th Ward, preferably the person that he recommended, which was Reginald G. Flynn. Um, that's my motion. I don't know if I'm going to get enough support, but support. That's, that's what I want to do. Okay. Support. Yes, motion. The motion is to read. Rec the recommend uh, my my motion is to um, the resolution, prior resolution, to um, Mike Brown asking him to rescind his decision on not appointing anyone to the eighth ward and allow us to vote, preferably for the person that um, um, Sargentson recommended, which was Reginald Flynn. And I think I got support from um, Neely. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Further discussion? Uh, Councilwoman Poplar? You know what? I support Mr. Nolan wholeheartedly that the Eighth Ward should have representation. Mm -hmm. And I believe, you know, Mr. Sargentson wanted who he wanted. But I have a name that I want. And I would like my name to be considered also. So I'm hoping that he will consider allowing us to put a person in that seat. Okay. Whether it be my name or Mr. Nolan's name. And then some other council people, they may have someone that they feel that's qualified to sit over in that seat. And we have received some letters, and I think uh, council members, I've I think we've provided copies of people mm -hmm. that have expressed interest mm -hmm. uh, in that seat to council members too. So, um, um, I, I support uh, the motion and uh, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Con council member let, 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 let me ask you a question. Okay, we vote on this. Are we voting to appoint Reginald Flynn no. or no. to open no. it up for another person? Well, my, well, my recommendation. Well, well, my recommendation, or my motion, was to ask Mr. Um, Mr. Brown to reconsider his decision. And when we, if he reconsiders his position, then allow us to vote. And I'm going to support the person that the council person that was in that seat recommended, and he recommended Reginald Flynn. So that would be the person.